Hi, welcome to the 3D Pen Den. One of the many fun uses of 3D pens is designing jewelry. Whether it is for yourself, for presents, or just to sell it. The possibilities are so endless it could fill a separate YouTube channel. But let's start with small steps and look at how to make jewelry findings first. If you are new to jewelry making, findings are the things that hold your jewelry parts together. Of course, there are a lot of commercial wire findings available and some of the time you will want to use those, like in the case of earrings. Sometimes you will want to combine some plastic ones with wire ones, because small thin findings made out of plastic are usually pretty fragile. So you want them to be made out of real wire to hold up. And sometimes it is just better for the design for certain parts to be made from the same material. Here I have a neck ring and a hook and I could really use a black jump ring to string this all together. Right here. So let's make one. The filament coming straight off the reel retains the curve of the spool. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to get it to remember a different size curve. In case of a jump ring, a very small and round curve. Whenever you are forming the plastic into a new shape, it is always about how much to heat it and where. I will need a dowel of the diameter I want my jump rings to be. Drilled with a hole the size of the filament I am using and some heat source. For this job I will use a stream of steam which will be just hot enough to soften the filament but not over melt it. And doing it this way, I can easily control just what part I'm softening at the moment. By the way, the video on steaming and several other heating methods is in the description. Let's see a piece of this process in real time, so you get the idea of how slow you have to go. When making a coil, I want to heat the filament just a little piece at a time to be able to control how it's winding onto the dowel. And I need the heat to be just hot enough to soften it, to curve it, but not so soft that it will stick together. Steam is the perfect temperature for that. And please note, that this was only tested for PLA. It may not work for ABS. You would have to try it. Try to coil the plastic as evenly as possible. One strand right to the next. Do not overlap it, if you can help it. So you end up with the same size jump rings. Go slow enough for the heat to bend the filament without you having to pull at it, because some PLA filament stretches. For this particular job you are better off with PLA Pro, which doesn't stretch at all and produces very even rings. It may take a bit of twisting to get the coil off the dowel. The longer the spring, the harder it gets get it off the dowel. So don't go overboard with the length. Make more shorter coils instead. Here we go. Quite springy. 
Now we are ready to cut it. Right where it makes a full circle. And we have a jump ring. If you skip one circle and cut it in the next one, you will get what is called a split ring, which is basically a keychain ring, which has the advantage that it will hold things on it without having to be sealed shut. Which brings us to how to seal jump rings, should you want them to be super safe. Twist it till the two ends really meet and use a wood burning iron with a skinny tip or a styrofoam cutter to seal it. Stick it together as fast as you can and hold it till it cools. And repeat. If you make jewelry regularly, you will know where to go from here. If you are new to making jump rings, you may want to first learn on a regular wire so you don't have to deal with the heating part while you are getting the hang of this process. Now we can hang our pendant onto the neck ring right here. Seal it. And when it's cold, hang it. And we are done. These filament coils are useful for way more than just jump rings. If your hot water kettle is one of those safety ones that turns off when the water starts to boil, you may need to boil your water in the old fashioned way on the stove in a real kettle which will allow you to experiment with different sizes and shapes of spouts. They all have their pros and cons. Now, if you make your coil sized strategically for the right size of your finger, you can have a whole lot of different ring components that you can then combine together or work further. Fun just never ends. Now let's make the filament remember slightly bigger curve. This is as big as this size kettle spout can handle, I think. It is a PVC plumbing pipe of outside diameter about 6 centimeters. It says the inside diameter is about 2 inches. See, it does remember the wrist size curve quite nicely. Now it's ready for some beads or you can just wear it as is. As the circles get bigger than your wrist, it may be time to change the strategy. What if you need even bigger curve? Perhaps even bigger than the coil that comes off the filament spool. I want my neck ring about the size of this tin, which also happens to have a convenient forming groove in it. I will cut the filament just a little longer so I have room to form the closing hooks at both ends. At this point, it would be convenient if the filament softened all over, all at once. So let's just dunk the whole thing in the boiling water. It will become instant spaghetti, even try to stick to itself like spaghetti, but don't let it. It won't ever overmelt because the water never gets hotter than its boiling point. Form it and hold it until it's cold. Mm -hmm. 
See, it does hold a curve bigger than the original spool size. And now to the smaller kettle spout again to form the closing hook and an eyelet. I know what you're thinking. Not all findings are curved. What about the ones that start from a straight piece of wire? Like head pins and eye pins and such. There is a whole video on straightening filament, which is linked in the description, but if you missed it, here is a super quick recap. Boil a piece you are planning to straighten, just as when we were boiling the neck ring, and then stick it onto a cool surface in between two cold tiles until it stiffens, like so. Now we are ready to make some straight filament findings. Head pins are essentially little sticks with a cap. So you can hang beads or whatever else without them sliding off. Put a piece of Teflon sheet down so you don't stick to your griddle. Turn it to medium heat and wait till it melts the filament enough to form a decent head. And as usual, cool it on something before it can be peeled off. It's that simple. Or you can do the same thing on an iron if that's more convenient. Just find some way to keep the Teflon sheet up there or a piece of parchment so you don't mess up your iron. So what can you do with head pins? Many things. Some don't even involve jewelry, but for the sake of this video, we will stick with an earring. I will use a little piece of cardstock paper to hold my pin vertical, and then assemble my little wheels onto this axle. Here is a good example of combining commercial wire findings with filament custom ones. I need something skinny but sturdy to attach the earring to the ear wire hooks. And when I made the eye pin part with just 3D pen, I kept losing my earrings regularly. The piece of real wire really solved that problem. I will shorten and seal the other side of the head pin, but leave it loose enough for the layers to keep spinning. I will iron it shut with a wood burning tool with a flat button attachment through a piece of Teflon sheet to keep it from sticking. Just do this part carefully so you don't smash everything together to the point where it will stop spinning. Resist the temptation to check it before it cools down. It will be stuck to the Teflon sheet until it's cold enough to release. Or you can rub it with a cold wet rag if you are in a hurry. Good, still spinning. Now we can get rid of the paper. You just saw me use a commercial eye pin, but you can also custom make those if the project calls for it. Grab your straightened filament piece with needle nose pliers so the end barely peeks out on the other side of the plier jaws. Steam and twist and hold. And here we go. Or if you don't happen to own needle nose pliers, you can accomplish the same thing with two thin dowels or knitting needles stuck together with a piece of tape. Work 
works just as well. Here I have a double-sided eye pen in white. Close up you may see that the filament usually slightly dents in the twisting process, which is rather difficult to avoid since we are softening it. But the way I'm planning to use this, it won't show much. And here we'll put our necklace pendant. We are done. Still spinning. One last note about how to make a simple closure finding. The process is similar to the eye pin with just one hook at each end. That is ever so slightly more open than in the case of the eye of the eye pin. So we can slide the width of the filament in. And now we can use it to close something. Of course, if you can make jump rings, the next logical step is to make chains. But that should really be another video. So until next time, go and make something.